There in Islam, according to Quran, I just want you to help me out. Jesus Christ he is not a God, but his position is unknown. Jesus was crucified for all our sins. Being a human, I get confused. My mom was Christian and my father was Muslim. Why do we need a religion like Islam? In my opinion, you are the most rational, logical, easy to understand kind of scholar that I've ever come across in my life. Do we have any other non-Muslims on the mic on this side? Yes, we do. Go ahead, brother. Yes, please. My name is Chandi Raja. I am from India. I am working as assistant manager accounts. I would like to ask two questions. Number one, as you say, Islam is a way of life as per the Quran. Okay. What do you mean by way of life? What are the explanation for that? Can I get number? Brother, the question that in my earlier answer I said Islam is a deen, it's a way of life. He's asking what do you mean by way of life? Way of life means how do you lead a life? What is good for you, what is bad for you, what is harmful, what you should eat, what you should not. There are few do's and don'ts, few things which are compulsory in life, few things which are prohibited, the remaining are mobile optional. So the Quran is a guide, is an instruction manual for the human being that how a life should be led. Like how when you buy a machine, you have an instruction manual, what is good, what is bad, how you should operate. So the way of life is how should you lead your life? And what are the good things that you should not rob, you should not cheat, you should be truthful, you should pray to Almighty God, you should give charity to the poor. All these are instructions. Like when you appear for an examination, brother, if you want to pass the test in science, so what do you do? You read the textbook, you memorize it, and you appear for the paper. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Mul, chapter number 67, verse number 2, Allah di khalaq al mawta wal hayata. It is Allah who has created that and life to test which of you is good in deeds. So this book is the instruction manual. You read it and you lead your life according to how a creator wants. If you follow the instruction correctly, you will go to paradise. If you disobey, if you break the rules, then you won't go to paradise, then you go to hell. So this is a way of life mentioned in the Quran and the Sahih Hadith that the sayings of the last and final messenger Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Hope that answers the question, brother. Sorry for interrupting. One more. Suppose, as you said, that uh, it is the way of life, but following the way of life, as is said in the Quran, there are a lot of hurdles which we have to come across in each and every day of life. Could you explain me? Brother said that following the way of life, many hurdles will come. Brother, I, by my education, I'm a medical doctor. To pass my degree, bachelor's of medicine, you know, when you pass BA degree, the test is easy. But when you pass BA, you become only a graduate. When you pass graduation, MBBS, bachelor of medicine, bachelor of surgery, it's more difficult. We had to study for 18 hours a day, sleep less. But once you pass, you get a better honor, doctor, DR in front of your name. So higher the degree, more difficult is the test. So this Quran shows you a way of life. Once you pass this test, you go to Jannah, you go to paradise. Hurdles are bound to come. When you sit for an examination, there are bound to be some questions which are difficult. That does not mean run away from the examination. So hurdles are bound to come, but this hurdle will take you towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is testing you. If there are no hurdles, then where is the test? If there are no hurdles, brother, in life, then where is the test? As I mentioned earlier, Almighty God has created life and death to test which of you is good in deeds. If there are no hurdles, then where is the test? Allah wants to test you whether you follow His commandments or not. So this 
life where there is a test for the hereafter, unless there are hurdles, how will you be tested? You can't say, I want to appear for an examination, I don't want to study, I don't want to read anything, and I want to pass. How can you pass? I hope that answers the question, brother. I accept you, but there is one more question from my side. Yes, brother, most welcome. What's your question? Regarding Hinduism compared to, that is, Islam. In the Hinduism, it is also said that there is only one God. Whereas, the same is said in Quran also. Is it good to go with Islam or with Hinduism? MashaAllah. It's a very good question. Brother says that he's a Hindu. He knows the Hindu scripture says there's one God. Even Islam says there's one God. Is it better to follow Islam or is it better to follow Hinduism? The reply is given in Surah Imran, chapter 3, verse 64. The Almighty God says, Tala vila kalimatin sawa im baina bainakum. Come to common terms as between us and you. So let us agree to follow what is common. The first is Allah nabuda illallah, that we worship none but Allah. Now, I'm giving you an answer that will satisfy both the Hindu and the Muslim. The first you have to do is better follow what is common. What is different, we'll discuss tomorrow. So when you're following what is common in the Quran, and the Hindu scriptures, neither the Hindu will feel offended, neither the Muslim will feel offended. The problem is, neither do the Hindus know, neither do the Muslims know very well what is common in both the scriptures. First thing most important is Allah Nabu Dailala, that you worship none but one God. That you already know. You already agree that there's one God? Alhamdulillah. Let's go to the other point. The other point that is common is that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of God. The Muslims agree, Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God. If you read the Hindu scriptures, there are hundreds of references I can give you. Only from the Hindu scriptures talking about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I can give a talk, time does not permit me to give a long talk of a couple of hours. But if you read the Hindu scriptures, it's mentioned in Bhavisha Purana, Parva 3, Khanda 3, Adhe 3, Shlokas 5 to 8 about the coming of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's mentioned in Bhavisha Purana, Parva 3, Khanda 3, Adhe 3, Shlokas 10 to 27 about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's mentioned in Bhavisha Purana, Parva 3, Khanda 1, Adhe 3, Shlokas 21 to 23 about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you read Atharva Ved, it's mentioned Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 127, verse number 1 to 14, it's called as Kuntap Suktas. Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 127, verse number 1 to 14, it talks about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's mentioned in Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 21, verse number 6 about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 21, verse number 7 of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's prophesied even in Rig Ved, book number 1, hymn number 53, verse number 9. There are many references of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Hindu scriptures. He is called as Ahmad, means one who praises. That was the other name of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is mentioned by name as Ahmad in Psalm Ved Uttarchik, mantra number 1500. He is mentioned as Ahmad in Psalm Ved Indra, chapter number 2, verse number 152. He is also mentioned in Yajur Ved, chapter 31, verse number 8. In Rig Ved, book number 8, hymn number 6, verse number 10. He is mentioned in Atharva Ved, book number 8, hymn number 5. Verse number 16, in Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 126, verse number 14. He is mentioned by name as Narashansa. Narashansa in Sanskrit means Nar, means man. Shansa means one who is praiseworthy. So Narashansa means a man who is praiseworthy. If you translate into Arabic, it means Muhammad. So Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is mentioned by name as Narashansa. In many places in the Hindu scriptures, in Rig Ved, book number 1, hymn number 13, verse number 3. Rig Ved, book number 1, hymn number 18, verse number 9. Rig Ved, book number 1, hymn number 106, verse number 4. Rig Ved, book number 1, hymn number 142, 
verse number three. He's mentioned Rig Veda, book number two. Hymn number three, verse number two. Rig Veda, book number five. Hymn number five, verse number two. In Rig Veda, book number seven. Hymn number two, verse number two. Rig Veda, book number ten. Hymn number sixty-four, verse number three. Rig Veda, book number ten. Hymn number one into verse number two. In Yajurve chapter number twenty-one, verse number fifty-five. Yajurve chapter twenty, verse thirty-seven. Yajurve chapter twenty, verse fifty-seven. Yajurve chapter twenty-eight, verse number two. Yajurve chapter twenty-eight, verse number nineteen. Yajurve chapter twenty-eight, verse forty-two. I can keep on and on. Quoting only references from the Hindu scripture about Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, if you are a good Hindu, you should believe in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Assalamu alaikum. I am Zakir Naik, and you are watching Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Many people are misguided by films, the internet, and parties. But the future lies in the youth of today. Will they ever become the leaders of tomorrow? What are their responsibilities? Are they more interested in the worldly life or the eternal life? To understand the mission of our youth, watch me, Arib Islam, only on Peace TV. Join Arib Islam in Mission of the Youth. Every Wednesday at 3:30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 2 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. Marriage is the cornerstone for a successful society. How can we maintain a successful marriage? Join us in this journey where we learn how to plan for it, execute it, maintain it, and end it according to Islam. Grasp the unique philosophy of Islam to make marriages successful in marriage and divorce. Next on Peace TV. I'll just give you one reference more about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Kalki Purana. He is mentioned in Kalki Purana, chapter number two, verse number four, five, seven, eleven, and fifteen. It says that this Kalki Purana is the last and final Antim Rishi, is the last and final messenger. His father's name will be Vishnu Yas. Vishnu means God. Yas means servant. It means servant of God. In Arabic, it's Abdullah. And you know the name of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's father was Abdullah. It mentions his mother's name would be Sumati. Sumati in Sanskrit means peace, serenity. In Arabic, it's Amina, and that was the name of the mother of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It says he'll be born in the city of peace, referring to Makkah. He'll be born in the family of the priest of that city. We know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born in the family of Quraysh. He will be a universal antim rishi. He will be universal, as the Quran says in Surah Ambiya, chapter 21, verse number 107. Wama al salna ka illa rahmatil alamin. That we have sent thee not, but as a mercy to the whole of humanity, to all the worlds, to all the creatures. It prophesizes that he will get the revelation in a mountain. We know he got the revelation in Jabal Nur in Gara Hira. It says he will migrate northwards and come back. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated from Makkah to Medina northward, then came back. It further says that he will have four companions, talking about the first Khulfa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr, Hazrat Umar, Hazrat Usman, Hazrat Ali. May Allah be pleased with them all. So all these prophecies mentioned in the scriptures point to no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So if you are a good Hindu, besides believing in one God, you also have to believe in the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. It's mentioned. In both the scriptures, that you should not have alcohol. 
Quran says in Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse number 9, did not have alcohol. It's mentioned in Manusmiti, chapter number 9, verse number 235. You should not have alcohol. Manusmiti, chapter number 9, verse number 238, you should not have alcohol. Manusmiti, chapter number 11, verse number 55. Manusmiti, chapter number 11, verse number 94, you should not have alcohol. So, if you're a Hindu or a Muslim, you should not have alcohol. Both the scriptures say that you should not gamble. So, Ramayada chapter 5, verse number 19 in the Quran says that Manusmiti chapter number 9, verse number 221 to 228 says you should not gamble. If you read the Rigved, book number 10, hymn number 34, verse number 3 to 13 says you should not gamble. So, if you are a good Hindu, you should at least follow what is common. And the basic thing in both these scriptures that there's one God, he has got no image, he has got no idol, and Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of this almighty God, the last and final messenger. So I would tell you, initially follow both. And after that, your scripture says that follow the last and final messenger. That means you follow the hadith of the messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the last and final revelation which was given to him. So brother, do you believe that there is one God? Yes, sir. Do you believe? Do you, do you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Yes, sure. 100%? 101%. MashaAllah. So these two things, <laughs> these two things, brother, are sufficient for you to enter the fold of Islam. To enter the fold of Islam. And after that, you have to read the message and the guidance of this messenger and what was revealed to this messenger, that is the Quran and the Sai Hadith. Sir, I have another one small doubt. Can yes. you, uh, may I question? Brother, but do you believe there's one God? Do you believe Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi is a messenger of God? Yes, sir. These two are sufficient for you to enter the school of Islam. Sure. Thank Doubts you, will sir. always be there. Okay, then. Thank you. No, but I'm asking the question. Do you believe in these two things? Yes. Do you have some doubt that before that you want to Yes, ask? Okay, I, do, brother. I do want to ask one more question. Okay, ask one more question, brother. Yeah. In Islam, it is stated that uh, there is no idol worship, okay? That is number one. Whereas in India, I see people who are uh, doing on this, uh, what you call, uh, dargas, performing all types of pujas like Indians, Hindus, okay? What is your answer for this? Brother, you are a Hindu, you told me. Yes. You know that mentioned in your scripture, idol worship is wrong. Yes. Yes. Yet in India, I know millions of Hindus who do idol worship. Yes. That means they are not following the scripture. Similarly, I agree with you, there are many Muslims in India who are not following Quran and Hadith. That, that is... That is my question. That is my that, question. That is my answer. As, as that, a... that is my answer. Like Hindus are not following the scriptures, there are many Muslims who are not following the scripture. Any Muslim who breaks any law of the Quran or any commandment of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is not a practicing Muslim. So Thank that, you for your kind answer, sir. But brother, I want to tell you that you want to be a practicing Hindu? No. Yes? No. Practicing means you believe that Almighty God does not have any idols? Yeah, I do accept that there is no idol worship. And you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Yes. So do you want to enter into the fall of Islam? Yes, please. Brother, is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? Is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? Nothing, sir. I have come on my own. MashaAllah. So doing out of a free will? 101%. MashaAllah. So inshallah, I will, I will say in Arabic, and repeat it, inshallah. Sure. Go ahead. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa rasuluhu. Wa rasuluhu. I bear witness. I bear witness. That. That. There is no God. There is no God. But Allah. But Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That. That. Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad is, is the messenger of Allah. The messenger of Allah. MashaAllah, you are a Muslim and may Allah you. subhanahu wa ta'ala guide you more and give you the best in this world and the akhirah. Do we have a non-Muslim on the other mic of the sisters?
If we have a non-Muslim of the Sisters Mike at the rear, just mention and you can go ahead with the question. Good evening. Uh, I'm Sarita Mary. Uh, I work in private company as administration manager. And uh, I wish to take up Islam. And it's only because of two men in my life. That is, uh, I wish to marry a Muslim man and uh, I see him every day, uh, the way he talks to people and his simplicity and uh, he's very religious. The second person will be Mr. Zakir. <laughs> that is because I'm watching his speech and it is very informative to know about all the religion. Before I could take up Islam, I have one query to clarify by your end. That is, how is Mother Mary, that is Mary, mother of Jesus, is described in Quran? Mashallah, sister is impressed with Islam by seeing a person who's religious and seeing my tapes. The only query is that how is Mother Mary described in Islam and what is the status? If you compare what is mentioned about Mother Mary, may Allah be pleased with her in the Quran, as well as the Bible, in the Quran, there is a full chapter, a full surah, called as Maryam, on the name of the mother of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Maryam. If you read all the books in the Bible, whether the Old Testament or New Testament, whether the 66 books of the Protestants or 73 books of the Catholics, there is not a single book which is named after Mary. But there is a full chapter in the Quran called as Maryam. May Allah be pleased with her. And if you refer and analyze the story, of the birth of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, mentioned in the Bible and mentioned in the Quran, both are different. Overall, they are the same, but minute points if you note. For example, if you read the Bible, it says that when Archangel Gabriel comes and asks Mother Mary that you shall have a son, so she replies, how shall I have a son where I knoweth not a man? Knoweth not a man means sexually. Same thing in the Quran. If you read in the Quran, in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 42, 247, where Mother Mary, she says that, how shall I have a son when no man has touched me? So Archangel Gabriel replies, Kun fayakun, when Allah decrees the matter and says to it be, and it is. So in the Quran it says, when Mother Mary questions, that how shall I have a son, when no man has touched me. That means no man has touched her sexually. So Archangel Gabriel replies, when Allah decrees the matter and says to it be and it is. In the Bible, Archangel Gabriel replies that the Holy Spirit will come unto thee. So when a person has to think that what will the Holy Spirit come unto Mary and do what? So it lets your mind wander. It lets your mind wonder what will the Holy Spirit come unto Mother Mary and do. The meaning is the same. It means that without any male intervention, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was born. But the way the Quran describes is more sublime, is more divine, and is much more palatable as compared to the Bible. So if you read in the Quran, Allah says in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse 42, Allah says that the angels came and told that Allah has chosen thee to Mother Mary, and chosen thee above the women of all nations. So the honor given to Maryam salam in the Quran is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that she is the chosen woman above the women of all nations. Imagine the Quran is being revealed in Arabic to the Arabs. And at that time, the Arabs and Jews did not get along well. The Quran says a Jewish woman 
the mother of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, Mother Mary, has been honored as the woman chosen above all the other women. Imagine Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is giving the message to the Arabs and is actually antagonizing them that the Jewish woman is chosen above the Arab woman. He did not say that his wife Khatija, may Allah be pleased with her, was the chosen woman or his daughter Fatima, may Allah be pleased with her, is the chosen woman. He could not because Allah said that's a revelation from Allah, he has to repeat it. He says in the Quran that Mother Mary is the chosen woman above the women of all nations. So the respect given in the Quran to Mother Mary is far superior even than the Bible. Hope that answers the question, sister. Stepped inside his home, he was overwhelmed with fear. An angel came with words from God. Things were still unclear. Saying, read, read, but he could not read. Amazing words that he heard. A trembling deep inside his heart. Confused by what had occurred. There was only one who could comfort him. To help him see the light. To ease his fears, to reassure. Was Khadija his wife? He said, Zamiluni, Zamiluni, Dathiruni, Dathiruni, a mighty task has come before.